Yeah, so um, what can happen actually um, if you look at um, um, the data that changes? Uh, well, we talked about um, that if the data is changing, also patterns can change. And uh, here you see an example where clusters evolve over time. So here you have one, two, three, four, five clusters. And for example, because new points are coming in, um, and maybe you also forget about uh, older points. So in that case, the cluster expands because a lot of points come in here uh, where this cluster already exists, but uh, it expands in the size also. So in the extents also. And then since you also forget about uh, older points, uh, f in the next uh, um, yeah, snapshot, um, uh, some of the points got obsolete here, so it splits up. Yeah? And also this uh, cluster here uh, shrinks because um, some of the points in here um, got obsolete. The same holds true for those guys here. Yeah? So um, obviously um, you may have cluster expansions, you may have new clusters, but also you may have things that um, uh, got, uh, get obsolete, become obsolete, and then clusters may split, clusters may shrink, clusters may disappear uh, uh, completely. Uh, and those are the changes you not only want to uh, adapt to, but you probably also want to report. So what happened to this cluster? It splits up into two. What happened to this cluster here? It uh, appears, this is a new cluster which hasn't, which, which was not uh, uh, apparent here or here. Yeah? And the same holds true not only for clustering, but also for uh, classification. What can happen with classification? Well, typically uh, the decision boundary may drift over time. So here you see an example where at time point T1, the decision boundary between the two classes minus and plus uh, is somewhere here. <clears throat> and you may have a perfect S um, support vector machine um, distinguishing between those two classes. And after some, uh, uh, some times at time point um, T2, uh, because new train examples came in, uh, as you see here, the cluster bound, the, the decision boundary shifts. Yeah? So the decision boundary now is this one here. This one was the old one, B1, and now it's B2. Yeah? And you want to adopt, of course, because B1 is not um, valid anymore. So you would have um, some um, training error on uh, if you use B2. And uh, after another um, um, time period at timestamp T3, um, again it changes yeah? uh, because new training data came in, probably old training data got obsolete. Um, so you see that from the original um, decision boundary, the decision boundary changes to this one here over time. Yeah? And again, you want to um, record that, adopt your, your models to that, and probably also report those changes to the user um, because he or she um, can do something with it. Yeah, and uh, if we talk about um, uh, evolving patterns, then we also talk about data aging because we are typically not interested in the whole history of the data stream, but only in the recent history. Yeah, because typically data that has came in um, uh, just recently is more important than data uh, that uh, came in a year ago or something like that. And there are different um, so-called aging mechanisms or waiting. Uh, actually, you wait your data. So the, the, the data that is most current um, should be weighted higher than the data that is older. That should be weighted uh, smaller. Uh, so uh, we're talking about weighting mechanisms typically um, or also aging mechanisms is probably the same um, and um, yeah uh, there are different mechanisms and also so-called window models which we will see uh, on the next slides um, that reflect which part of the stream history is important for learning and uh, we typically have th those three models here the so-called landmark model um, the sliding window model and damped window model and we'll have a look on all those uh, three here so the landmark model, landmark window model, is probably the easiest one. So it includes all objects that 
so it, it defines how many objects or what kind of objects you um, consider and which weight uh, you give those uh, those objects yeah and then consider for 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 your mining for your processing and in the landmark model you typically include all objects from a, a given landmark on so you define a landmark for example e1 yeah and then you say from this landmark here from this time slot you uh, consider all objects coming in and usually all points have an equal weight yeah so uh, the weight is one for all objects so each object is uh, weighted um, 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 equally <clears throat> and uh, yeah so the the stream is ever increasing sometimes this is a quite unrealistic thing but um, okay that's that's a very simple model so if you if you say well uh, you cannot deal with an ever evolving stream because sometimes uh, at some point in time um, you will um, yeah run out of memory, then you can use a sliding window model. Um, so you remember only the most uh, recent entries, the mo the n most recent entries, where n is the size of the mo of, of the window you know, of the sliding window. So it's a kind of window of, of size n and you slide that over your stream yeah so at the right point you are uh, th that is al always your your actual time slot and you go n time slots in the in the in the past and only consider those n time slots yeah and again all points within the wall uh, the windows typically have the same weight like uh, one and for the rest you have zero so um, after a time slot runs uh, or gets out of the of the, of the current sliding window, um, you forget it completely. Yeah? So if you are, for example, at uh, E6 and your uh, sliding window is uh, uh, size is, is three, you uh, have forgotten already those three guys here, E1, E2, and E3, because you only um, uh, um, uh, store E4, E5, and E6, which are uh, in the sliding window. Yeah, and then you can have um, a, a, bit, a little bit more sophisticated thing, a damped window model, which, well, uh, is typically um, a kind of combination of landmark and slide, or, uh, a combination of landmark model or sliding window model with a different uh, weighting scheme. So here, you um, usually in the landmark model and also in the sliding window model, you, you usually weight all relevant things equally uh, with one, yeah? And now the damped window model um, gives you um, some mechanism to um, weight um, um, yeah, instances um, uh, uh, differently according to their age. Yeah? So data are subject to aging now according to a so-called fading function or aging function, f of t. So t is the time slot um, of the data um, point. Uh, where the data point uh, or the data object arrived. So each um, data point is assigned um, a weight that decreases with, uh, with time yeah? uh, through, this, uh, through this fading function. Uh, and you can use different fading functions, um, but a very uh, commonly used fading function in temporal application, uh, applications is an exponential fading function like this one here, so f of t, so the weight of uh, an object at time slot t is uh, determined by 2 to the power of minus lambda t, where lambda is called the decay rate. You probably know from chemistry. So lambda should be uh, greater than uh, 0, obviously. And um, well, what does it make? Uh, what, what, what does it do? Uh, what does it make uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, um, yeah, weighting? Well, the higher the value of lambda, obviously, because it's to the power of minus lambda, the lower uh, is the importance. Yeah? So the higher the t and the higher the lambda, uh, the lower is the importance of, uh, of that data. Higher the, the higher the t means the older is the data. Yeah? And you see here the effect uh, with different lambdas. So if you set lambda to zero, you have uh, the common scheme of uh, all relevant things are weighted by one. And if you decrease, uh, uh, sorry, um, yeah, decrease uh, lambda, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> increase lambda, of course, yeah, um, you start with zero, and if you increase lambda here, um, then you see that, um, yeah, here you have the time uh, slots, uh, so time frame 10, so this is your current time frame, you're, you're right now at, yeah, and uh, 
with uh, lambda zero, everything gets the same weight. So if you set lambda to 0 0.1, you see that um, the, the weight, which is um, depicted here on the y axis, the weight is decreasing with um, elapsed time. Yeah? So your uh, oldest um, object here has the smallest weight. Uh, and uh, the, you see here this um, typical exponential um, uh, curve uh, in the fading um, if you uh, increase uh, the lambda. Yeah?